Anybody out there really love the Lord? I said, anybody out there really love the Lord? Say, I really love the Lord. I really 
say happy Mother's Day to all of our mothers. Happy Mother's Day to each and every one of you. We're going to ask all our mothers to stand, wave your hand, do something. Let's see where you at. Amen. 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 Our deacons are coming now with our scripture and our prayer. Eternal God, my Father, the great architect of the universe, who give all good gifts to those who always come. O oh God, we thank you, O oh God, for this day that you have set aside, O oh God, for Mother's Day of Heaven. O oh God, we thank you for Mother's Day of Heaven, Father, that we get opportunity, O oh God, to praise these wonderful women, O oh God. We like God, they had many ups and downs like we raised those kids, O oh God. O oh God, you know we wasn't no but our mother worked.
encourage you like you did, oh God. They stay up late at night, worry about their child when they're going to come home. Somebody's child was sick all night, oh Lord, and the mother stayed up with him, oh God. The mother has sacrificed herself for the child. Oh God, many times, oh God, they went out eating, oh God, because they had their children. So God, we thank you for these mothers, oh God. I pray, oh God, that you continue to bless them, oh God. Uh, we are old up in age now, oh God, and we thank you for them, oh God. And on this day, oh God, sometimes we just lose our mother with buying cars. Oh God, houses and home, oh Heavenly Father. Buying jewelry, buying clothes, oh Heavenly Father. So God, but I know today, oh Heavenly Father, the best gift that we can give our mother today, oh God, is we give our life to you, oh Heavenly Oh, God, that's the best gift we can give our mother, oh, God. So we pray today, oh, God, if one not saved today, oh, God, that they will come, oh, God, give it, teach you the hand, oh, God, and give you their heart. That's the best gift we can give, oh, God. So we ask you, oh, God, to do it right now, oh, God, that we humble ourselves, oh, God, that we ask that thou will come by this service for a little while, oh, God, and quench our searching soul. Thou by God will feel some bread from heaven because we won't no more. Thou by our God and have thy own way, Lord. Have thy own way. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. We thank our deacons for our scripture and our prayer. At this time, we're going to now have a tribute to our church mothers at this time. And after that tribute, Nell Chorus is going to come back and sing, and then the next voice you will hear will be that of our lecturer, uh, Minister William Jones. Good morning and happy, happy Mother's Day. Before I give tribute to the former church mothers, if I'm not mistaken, I think I saw one of our oldest church members walk in on her own with her daughter. She celebrated her 101 birthday on April 1st of this year. <laughs> Sister Mary Simmons. There she go. Raise your hand, Sister Simmons. You kind of show it over there. I heard she is still cooking and still washing clothes. I'm not going to try to be up here long because we have about six mothers, but I'm going to give you a brief synopsis. There's so much I can say about each one of these mothers, but you know time does not permit me to do so. It gives me great pleasure to tell you a little bit about the past church mothers of Second Honor Baptist Church. Mother Sarah Frazier, the first mother of Second Honor Baptist Church, May 1922 when she was elected, and she passed in May 30th, 1968. She was born to brother and sister Joseph Julia Sherman of St. Helena, South Carolina. Mother Frazier attended Penn Industrial School. And you know, Penn Industrial School was the first school in South Carolina for blacks. She moved to Savannah in 1912 and became a member of Second Arnold. She worked in every department in the church, president of the senior choir for over 20 years, president of the Missionary Society and superintendent of the Sunday School. Our next mother is Mother Betty Elizabeth Frazier Bolden. She became the second mother of Second Arnold, May 1969. She departed in 2002. 
She was born February the 14th, 1904, a native of Bluffton, South Carolina, born to Deacon and Sister George Evelina Frazier. She joined Second Honor in 1930. She was a member of the Usher Board. The word ministry was not used during that time. President of the Senior Mission, Pastor's Aid Board, member of the Deaconess Board, Gospel Chorus, Vice President for the Women Exonery of the Berean Association, and member of the Sarah Frazier Sisterhood. In 1991, the mission sent a letter to the Board of Deacons requesting that the mission change their name to the Betty Elizabeth Bolden Mission in honor of Mother Bolden, and the request was granted. Now we are coming a little further up the line. During the candlelight communion service, December 7, 20, 2003, Pastor Hall announced the four mothers and the consecration service for them was held on April 25, 2004. They were Mother Queenie Gasson. Born April 23, 1917 in Bluffton, South Carolina to Isaiah and Agnes Frazier. She moved to Savannah, Georgia, where she studied beauty culture at Madam Friedman School of Cosmetology. She became a licensed cosmetologist in 1949. She joined Second Arnold in the late 1940s. She was one of the dedicated members of the Usher's Ministry and served as president. She was a member of Seniors in Action, the Bolden Mission, and the Sunday School for over 63 years. Mother Edna G. Dangle. She served from April 25th, 2014, 2004, until January 17, 2012. She was born September 8, 1912, in Georgetown, South Carolina, to Mr. George and Ella Mutri. She joined Second Arnold January 1926 and was baptized in the Savannah River. Mother Dingle completed school at Kyla and moved to attend nursing school through the Charity Hospital and Training School for Nurses. This was the site of the first hospital in Savannah to train African American doctors and nurses. She moved from the hospital to private duty as an LPN, specializing in care of newborns. Later change in vocation led to 20 years at the Savannah Police Department as a police matron and office clerk, where she retired in 1966. Mother Dingo's spiritual endeavors include senior choir and gospel chorus, one of the organizers of the Bolden Mission, pastor, pres past president of the senior mission. She taught Sunday school for 30 years and was first chairperson of the Board of Christian Education. In 1999, Mother Dinga was queen of the Berean Association. Now we have Mother Josie Mae Jones Mattis. She served from April 25th, 2004 to October 22nd, 2021. Mother Josie Mae Mattis is a native of Savannah. She was born to the late Deacon and Sister Willie, Alma Jones, in July 1st, 1930. She grew up on Ladies Island, South Carolina. She joined Second Arnold June of 1945. At the age of 15, Mother Mattis has her first job of playing the piano at Second Arnold Baptist Church, an Israelite. Mother Mattis worked in several capacities around Second Arnold, including Sunday school teacher, President of the Deacon, Deacon's Wives Ministry, Treasurer for the Baptist Training Union, Choir Number no. One, Member of the Senior Mission, Pastor's Aid, now the Golden Charity Circle, and the Sarah Frazier Sisterhood. Our next mother, Louise Bryant Grant Wiggins. Mother Wiggins became mother April 25th, 2004, until September 25th, 2022. She was born May 23rd in 1928, daughter in St. Helena Islands with her mother, Phoebe. We called her Sally. Her maternal grandparents, Charlotte and Bacchus Bryan, as well as her paternal grandparents, Claudia and Willie Grant. 
She was treasurer of the senior mission, a member of choir number one, Sunday school class number seven, senior Bible study, seniors in actions, the women's ministry, and the Berean Association, where she was crowned Miss Berean in October 2007 during the 107th annual session of the Berean Missionary Baptist Association. Mother Wiggins was a member of Second Honor Baptist Church for approximately 78 years before her demise. Ladies and gentlemen, our former mothers of the church, Second Honor Baptist Church. Come on, put your blessed hands together. Y'all can do a little better than that. Come on, put your hands together. We're going to, Mel Corn just came to bless you for just a few minutes. How I many you know the trouble going to last? I'm so glad. Ooh, yes, I am. Trouble, trouble don't last always. I'm so glad. Ooh, yes, I am. Trouble don't last always. On time. On time. Time to drop off. Found in the behave. A friend of mine. Of mine. Don't cloud come in your life. Hey, but he'll be there. Be there. Oh, you murder. I know he'll help you. Help you to bear. Trouble don't last away. Trouble don't last away. Trouble don't last away. No, 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 trouble don't last away. Trouble don't last away. No, 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 trouble don't last away. Trouble don't last away. Trouble don't last away. No, 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 trouble don't last away. Trouble
love it all last the way. is worthy to be praised. Our Father and our God, we come at this hour of prayer thanking you, God, for this wonderful day. We pray right now, God, for this message, God. We pray right now, God, that you use me as an instrument for a lecture, God. And then, Father, we pray right now, God, for all of these under the sound of my voice, God, to be recipients of this word. We thank you in Jesus' name. And then, Father, we pray right now that you take this, this word and, and let it be pleasing in your sight. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We do give honor to God and we give honor to Jesus and the blessedness of the Holy Spirit, to our pastor, father in ministry, to his wife, we give our honor to my wife, we give our honor right now to all of our deacons and all of our ministers, our deaconesses, the keepers of the door. And how about these dependable men? <laughs> Amen. We also honor these great musicians. Amen. And to every woman who takes care of children. Amen. Amen. We're not going to be long. Just remember, this, this is a lecture. Amen. Romans, the 8th chapter, and Luke, the 14th chapter. Romans 8. And Luke, the 14th chapter. If you have that, then say Amen. I don't hear anybody saying anything. Romans 8, verses 16 and 17. It says, The Spirit itself beareth witness with our spirit that we are children of God. And if children, then heirs, heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ. If so be that we suffer with him, that we may also glorify together. Luke 14, verse number 27, and it says, And whosoever do not bear his cross and come after me cannot be my that's in your Bible, say amen. In this Mother's Day lecture, we want to speak from this thought, a woman's place and the cross. A woman's place 
and the cross. Where is a woman's place? What is a woman's job? The answer to that question depends on the person asking. Men have their own definition of a woman's place and a job. Their place, according to some men, is somewhere rear of a man, but close enough to make him look good. Throughout history, women have fought for their place in the world. And they point out that Eve was created from a rib of Adam to be equal in service, not from his back to be behind him or from his foot to be walked on by him or from his fist to be her punching bag. Even today, women are struggling to gain an equal footing before the law and in the consciousness of society in general. Privately, many men think that a woman's place is in the home. In fact, they expect her to come home and be in her place while she is coming home from work. Women sometimes seem to be written off, written up, or underwritten. It is even more difficult for black women since they have both served in and out of the home throughout our history. Women have so many jobs. It is difficult to keep up with them all. If they were to pay a woman $5 an hour for all the jobs that she has, she would be very comfortable. Consider that she is a nursemaid, a dietitian, purchasing aid, a cook, a waitress, a dishwasher, housekeeper, a laundress, seamstress, a practical nurse, a maintenance worker, a chauffeur, a social secretary. And sometimes they have to pinch it for an absentee father. At five dollars, a hundred and twenty-five hour work week, she will make a for hmm, a fortune. But where is a woman's place when she stands before God? The woman's place is not measured by the proximity of a man, but by the closeness of her walk with God. Her role is the same as a man, to be used as an instrument of God for wherever she serves. As Christians, we are proud to know that God has a special place for everyone. All of us are equal in his eyes. Our place is to join those who confess him as Lord and usher in that day when every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. Paul, writing to the Romans, reminds every believer that we have a great inheritance as children of God. As children of God, we are heirs to the promise of salvation and the kingdom of heaven. In this respect, then there are no sexes. 
There are no races, no national barriers, because all are equal before God. A woman's place in this context is the same as a man's place. Both bear equal responsibility to serve God and to share in the rewards of the faith. But what is a woman's place? To walk humbly before God and do his will. Throughout our history, the black woman wore many hats. She played many roles in the drama that has become our heritage. Unlike her peers in other races, the black woman has never had the privilege of living a sheltered life. The social circumstances of our history have cast her as a role of a field hand, a nanny, a cook, a concubine, a maid, and a mother and a wife. Today, an increase in the education of black women has re resulted in much of their success. Those who have at least a BA degree gets a job. The black women right now is more educated, earns more money, and more likely to land a decent job now more than ever. Huh? Now that is a challenge that an increasing number of Christian women are accepting every day as they reevaluate their place in the order of things. The black woman's place in the family is that of an equal helper to her husband if she has one. Huh? And she must be a mother to her children. The black woman's place in the social order is that of a citizen of equal worth and receive equal protection under the law and equal pay and opportunity in the workplace. But what is a woman's place before God? When God looks down, he does not see a woman or a man. He only sees the spirit of a child of God who is an heir to the kingdom of God. God is an equal opportunity provider. Receiving blessing from God is not just a man's thing. Because God is an equal opportunity provider. I can hear Hannah talking to the Lord. If you give me a child, I'll bring him back to you. I hear Esther talking to the Lord. If you save my people from destruction and persecution, we'll serve. I hear Ruth talking to the Naomi. Your people shall be my people, and your God shall be my God. What God does for one, he'll do for the other. Let me tell you that today that we love to talk about Job. We love to preach about Job. But what about Mrs. Job? Job lost his family. But did, so did Mrs. Job. Job lost all of his wealth. But so did Mrs. Job. But when it was all over, bless, God blessed Mr. and Mrs. Job with more than they ever had. We like to remember that God saved Noah in the ark. But what about Mrs. Noah? She was in the ark too. What God has done for one, he'll do for another. The songwriter said that it's no secret what God will do. What he'll do for others, 
He'll do it for you. With arms wide open, he'll pardon you. There is no secret what God will do. Our place before God is to bow down before him and acknowledge him as Lord. Our place before God is to serve him with our mind, body, and soul. Our place is to live among each other so that the spirit can flow freely. Our place is to humble ourselves at the cross of Christ. It was a woman who told me, that the brand of sin was represented by the cross. The world defiles, but the cross represents our chance to be pure. The world hates, but the cross represents our chance to be loved. The world destroys, but the cross represents our chance to be lifted up. The world darkens, but the cross represents our chance to walk into the light. It was a woman who said, at the cross, at the cross, where I first saw the light, and the burden of my heart rolled away. It was there by faith I received my sight. And now I am happy all the day. We want to tell every mother, take up the cross of Christ and you will be happy all the day. God bless you. Amen, can we give our lecture another hand? It is now offering time. I know y'all thought we forgot. But we ain't forgot. So since we ain't forgot, you shouldn't forget. It is Mother's Day, so let's do what we got to do. Amen? Amen. How many people cooking? How many people going out? Whatever you're doing, let's give to the Lord first. Amen. Our ushers are preparing now to receive our offering. Father, we thank you for the gifts that are getting ready to be received. We ask that you will bless these purses, bless these pockets, that you would do what you do best. We thank you for the hearts of giving to your kingdom. We bless you now in Jesus' name. We do pray. Amen. Amen. Our ushers are coming now at this time. Praise his name. I love to 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 praise his
Y'all in a concert now. All that uh, got me tired. <laughs> Amen. We're gonna pause real quick, and um, we're gonna do some presentation. We're gonna ask um, Brother Jones to come first and do his presentation. And then after his presentation, then we're going to ask uh, Golden Charity if they would come and do their presentation.
Reverend Father, and Golden Charity, we will have a presentation from the Usher's Ministry. Good morning, church. First, we want to say happy Mother's Day to all of the mothers. <clears throat> and uh, allow me to deviate and go off script just a bit uh, to my wife, Monica. Would you stand? Monica, I want to say Happy Mother's Day to you. I want to say that I love you. I want to say that you're the best thing that ever happened to me. And I want to say Happy Early Anniversary. Uh, our anniversary is tomorrow. We'll be celebrating uh, 24 years. Yeah. You can sit down. Uh, thank you, thank you, Pastor Hall, for allowing me to go off script just a bit. I've been asked to recognize our first lady, Sister Hall. Amen. Let's stand and give us stand and give her a round of praise. When we think about pastors, we often think about the fact that pastors have calling on their lives. We also know that pastor's wives have a calling on their lives also. It takes a special woman to be a pastor's wife. And today, Sister Hall, we want to say that we see you, we acknowledge you, we recognize you. We know that the journey that God placed you on with Pastor Hall, especially over these last few months, has been difficult. And we know that your faith, your patience, and your love has been tested in immeasurable ways. And we know that you've had to put on your mother's hat with Pastor Hall. In, in a good way, Pastor. I mean that in a good way. But today, especially today, we want to say that we love you. We appreciate you. We thank you for allowing him to lean on you. And we just thank you for answering the call each and every time. And so today we want to recognize you with this small token of appreciation. First and foremost, we'd like to give honor to God for all the good things that he has done and continues to do in all of our lives. And we'll just like to say, look at all the goodness he has done for our pastor. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. We, the Golden Charity Circle, would like to thank each and every participant that helped us with our Mother's Day auction. Unfortunately, everybody could not have been a winner, but we thank you anyway for participating, and we plan to make it an annual event, so we hope that you guys will continue to support us. But we would like to make the presentation now for our Mother's Day auction, and the person whose name was selected is Ashley Maria Horton. Would you please come forward?
thank you. I'm appreciative, but thank you so much. In addition, um, I think Brother Jones has said everything that the Golden Charity would have liked to say. Um, so we did owe his message to our beloved, our virtuous woman, Sister Helen Hall. We love her so, 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 so very much. And on this day, we, the Golden Charity, would like to say Happy Mother's Day. We love you, and there's nothing that we wouldn't do for you. Also, this week, our um, beloved Sister Hall will be celebrating a birthday, and so we would like to say happy birthday to you, Sister Hall, and in addition to that is Pastor and Sister Hall's anniversary on Sister Hall's birthday, so we would like to say congratulations to this powerful and loving and awesome couple, and we say happy birthday to Sister Hall, so we have two additional cards for you. You make a poor teeny. Teeny would have already done that. Uh, ushers. already at the mic. that we want to honor today on Mother's Day, Sister Mary Simmons. <laughs> and Sister Thelma Young. <laughs> on behalf of the ushers, we appreciate you and happy Mother's Day to you all. The male chorus is coming at this time. And after the male chorus, the next voice you will hear will be that of the preacher, Minister Shannon Nelson. We ask y'all to bear with us on this. We had to make a few little changes real quick. Amen. We're going to do our best. Okay. Amen. Make all mistakes for love. Amen. Guys, you ready? Shoot, shoot, 
Shoo, 
you for your son. Thank you for your son, the Christ. Thank you for that day that he died on Calvary because there's something about the name of Jesus. It is the sweetest name that we know. Glory to God. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. We serve a mighty God. God is good all the time, and all the time, God is good. With protocol being established, I just want to say happy Mother's Day. You all are the most beautiful mothers that God has created. So we thank God for this day. So God, now I ask that you decrease me and let the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be acceptable in thy sight. Oh God, this word that you have given from on high, God, let it feed somebody's soul today, oh God. In Jesus' name, amen. I'm going to be coming from 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verses 4 through 13. Love is patient, love is kind, it does not envy, it does not boast, it is not proud, it does not dishonor others, it is not self-seeking, it is not easily angered, it keeps no record of wrongs, love does not delight in evil but rejoices in the truth. It always protects, always trusts, always hopes, always perseveres. Love never fails, but where there are prophecies, they will cease. Where there are tongues, they will be stilled. Where there is knowledge, it will pass away. For we in part, we know in part and we prophesy in part, but when completeness comes, what is in part disappears. When I was a child, I talked like a child, I thought like a child, I reasoned like a child. When I became a man, I put the ways of childhood behind me. For now we see only the reflection as in a mirror, then we shall see face to face. Now I know in part, then I shall know fully, even as I am fully known. And these three remain hope, I'm sorry, faith, hope, and love. But the greatest of these is love. If that is in your Bible, let us say amen. amen. Now, as believers, we should imitate Jesus' love by using our gifts to love and serve others as Jesus did. Now, you may ask, how do we do that? Well, I need you to understand that if Jesus intends for us to share his love, then we have to understand how Jesus loved. And what is the next best thing to the love of Jesus? Or better yet, what would be the best example of genuine love? And with that being said, for just a little while this morning, I want to talk to you about a real mother's love. Now, agape love is the highest love that can only come from God. Love from another human being outside of Christ that would imitate or even come as close as possible Loving unconditionally is the love received from a real mother's love. Now, the love of a mother falls under what's called storage love, which is an empathy bond, which is the love that humans hold for each other. Examples would be the love between a parent and a child or siblings. Now, God being the creator of all things good, meaning heaven and earth, loves us, right? We do know like, that God loves us, right? Okay. We are not here by chance or accident. We are, we are a, a part of the master's grand plan. Jeremiah 29 and 11 reminds us that God has a plan for everyone, and he wants us to flourish and give us a hope for a future. We are chosen, we are created, and designed and loved by God. Now, God's love does not expire it does not drain out or it is not used up. It is, his love is infinite and everlasting. And a real mother's love will always love us just like that. 
A real mother's love will love us often when we think we don't even deserve it. So as for me and my house, because I can't speak for anyone else, I can say that God has blessed me and my brothers with a woman so wonderful that if it had been anyone else, I probably would have sent a urgent plea up to heaven asking God to bring me back and send me back to my mom, Margie, because that woman exhibits, exhibits a real mother's love. Now, a real mother's love is a supreme love, meaning that the love held for her children takes precedence over all that she does with exception to God. So I'm going to say that again. A real mother's love is a supreme love with that meaning that the love held for her children takes precedence over all that she does with exception to God because we love no one more than we love God. Amen? A real mother's love is what's called a permanence of love, meaning that her love would never fail. It is a state of quality or lasting or remaining unchanged indefinitely. Her love will still surround us even when she's not with us. She depicts the perfect description of that love in that a real mother's love is patient and kind. And we all know that patience is a virtue. And it's, a, it's not an easy one at that. Especially when you have a flip out of the mouth child who questions or challenges everything that you say to them. Or when they don't agree with the rules, they roll their eyes, they scream and have tantrums. And I'm, you know, I have to say at times that was me. But thank God for a real mother's love. Now, don't get me wrong, because the tables could have been turned quite quickly, so don't get it twisted. The reaction could have been far more different. Hair pulled, I could have came in my room, pulled my hair. When I, she was a disciplinary, okay? So whenever I got out of line, she used to yank my hair so hard, I could feel it from my feet like it was going to come through my nose. So don't get it twisted. But it took a lot to get her to that point. A real mother will give you her last and sacrifice and deny herself so that you will always have. Does anybody know what a real mother's love is today? Now, now dads, I'm not saying that you don't play a role, but that's another story for another day another day in June. So I'm going to need for you to wait your turn, okay? We're going to show you some love, but it's not going to be till June, okay? I'm here today to talk about a real mother's love. When you look at your mother or if your mother has gone on to glory, there are certain things that stand out in your mind about her, just how remarkable and amazing that she was or she still is. Just how talented and fabulous, not to mention how beautiful and smart. You know, our mothers like to dress. They like to dress us, especially when we were little girls. The, the ribbons and the, the socks. So our mothers like to dress. Um, our mothers are innovative women. They are strong-willed. How else will one woman run a household taking care of everything from her husband to the children, to the finances, the dog and the cat, if you have a dog or a cat. Not many households have a dog or a cat. <laughs> so the Bible says in Proverbs 31, starting at verse 10, a wife of noble character who can find, she is worth far more than rubies. Her husband has full confidence in her and lacks nothing of value. She brings him good, not harm, all the days of her life. She selects wool and flax and works eager with her hands. She is like the merchant ship bringing her food from afar. She gets up while it's still night. She provides food for her family and portions for her female servants. Now, verse 25 says she is clothed with strength and dignity, and she can laugh at the days to come. She speaks with wisdom and faithful instruction is on her tongue. 
She watches over the affairs of the household and does not eat the bread of idleness. Her children arise and call her blessed, her husband also, and he praises her. Many women do noble things, but you surpass them all. Charm is deceptive and beauty is fleeting, but a woman who fears the Lord is to be praised. Honor her with all that her hands have done and let her works bring her praise at the city gate. Now, a real mother's love is unapologetic. A real mother's love is influential and a mother... A mother's love moves us with such passion to do things as if it was going to be the last mission. Nobody know about that? When she tell you to do something, when she tell you to clean up something, and you don't clean it, and you sit there, and then she come, all you see is a hand coming at you. So what's she telling you to do? Move with passion. Get it done, right? So those of us who have mothers who honor the Lord know that they should be praised because really nothing else matters. We ought to salute our mothers daily and give them their flowers while they can still smell them. Because if you, don't, if you know what a real mother's love is, there's nothing on this earth that can compare. A real mother's love will protect us. A real mother's love will give us guidance. A real mother's love, though at times may be seem harsh, in the end, we know that it is meant for our good. Her greatest journey in life are her children. She loves them enough to train them up in the way that they should go, and when they are old, they will not depart. A real mother's love is always concerned. She knows when something is wrong with her child. She is concerned enough to kneel before God's throne of grace and pray to the master above to deliver her child and restore the faith that is needed to serve him. A real mother's love does not condone the wrong actions of a child. She chastises and corrects the wrong. She does not spare the rod. A real mother's love is like the Symphonician woman in Mark chapter 7, verses 25 and 26, who, because of her faith and knowing that God is not a man that he should lie or the son of man that he should repent, she falls to her feet and begs Jesus to drive the demon out of her daughter. This is what a real mother love is. This is what a real mother love does. If you read further down in the text, first, Christ says, first let the children eat all that they want. It is not right to take the children's bread and toss it to the dogs. But because of the real mother's love and faith that she had, she replied to Jesus, even the dogs under the table eat the children's crumbs. Then Jesus told her, for such a reply, you may go, the demon has left your daughter. What a God we serve. What a God we serve. Does anybody know what a God we serve? Well, I'm here to tell you that when she went home, she found her child on the bed and the demon was gone. Because of her faith, she stood firm on her faith. She wasn't afraid to reply to Jesus in the manner in which she did. And because of that, Jesus cured her daughter. He released the demon from her daughter. A real mother's love knows that God is able to do more than what we could ever imagine. When all doors seem to be shut, a real mother again can go into the throne room and pray to God on her child's behalf. And what he tells her, what Christ tells her is that I am the door to the sheep. All you need to do is call my name. Now, how many of us that has mothers know to call on the name of Jesus? There's nothing that Christ will not do. All you have to do is ask. You have, you have that advantage when you have a real mother's love because not all mothers care. Not all mothers care. A lot of women bring the child here. They're vessels that's used to bring the child into the world. But once that child gets here, they go back to their life. There's nothing that they want to do more for that child. And it's a sad thing, but then you have other women who are more than willing to give love to a child that they don't even know. So we thank God for those mothers. We thank God for the love of those real mothers. A real mother is often tested in the Bible that... 
in which the Bible tells us in Exodus 2, verses 1 through 10, it says that now a man of the tribe of Levi married a Levite woman, and she became pregnant and gave birth to a son. When she saw that he was a fine child, she hid him for three months. But when she could hide him no longer, she got a papayas basket for him and coated it with tar and pitch. She, then she placed the child in it and put it among the reeds along the bank of the Nile. His sister stood at a distance to see what would happen to him. Then Pharaoh's daughter went down to the Nile to bathe, and her attendants were walking along the river bank. She saw the basket she saw the basket among the reeds and sent her female slaves to get it. She opened it and saw the baby. He was crying, and she felt sorry for him. This is one of the Hebrew babies, she said. Then his sister asked Pharaoh's daughter, shall I go and get one of the Hebrew women to nurse the baby for you? Yes, go, she answered. So the girl went and got the baby's mother. Pharaoh's daughter said to her, take this baby and nurse him for me, and I will pay you. So the woman took the baby and nursed him. When the child grew older, she took him to Pharaoh's daughter, and he came, and he became her son. She named him Moses, saying, I drew him out of the water. Now here we have a real mother, the, Le the Levite woman had no choice but to do this because Pharaoh had ordered that all the Hebrew boys that were born were to be thrown in the Nile River. So you talk about a real mother's sacrifice to risk losing her baby in order to save him. But we see that God had a master plan for our future by the name of Moses, who would free the Hebrew people from a life of captivity. If that, had not been, if that had not taken place, we would not be here. So we thank God for his master plan and for the love of a real mother. Now, without God's plan, again, that would not have been fulfilled. So today, we need to esteem our mothers. We need to honor our mothers because she completes man. She is soulful, she is virtuous, she is fierce, and she is bold, and she has dominion. A real mother's love not only makes a strong impact on her children, but on every kid in the, in the community, in the neighborhood. I know because I have a real mother. She's beautiful, she's like a lion roaring, and she's humble as humble can be. God created the real mother and placed genuine love inside of her because he knew that someone like me and someone like you needed the love of a real mother. Do I have anyone in here that need the love of a real mother? So we thank God for our mothers today. We honor our mothers today. And we thank God for taking that road up to Calvary, that rugged road up to Calvary. We thank him because if he had not died for us, if he had not cast our sins into the sea of forgiveness, we would not be here. We would not have that love of a real mother. We would not know what it means to, to be nurtured. We would not know what it means to, in the midnight hour when she's crying because we've done something we had no business doing, that she called on the name of the Lord and he came through. Is there anyone in the sanctuary today that knows about the love of a real mother? Is there anyone that can thank God today because he shed his blood on Calvary for us? Is there anyone in the sanctuary today that will honor Christ for our real mothers? Christ died on the cross. They whipped him all night long. They whipped him. He bled. He bled. He bled. But I tell you, 
he hung there. Not a mumbling word came from his mouth because he knew, he knew that he had to fulfill the prophecy for us to be here today. He knew that if that had not happened, that would, would not be the love of a real mother. So we thank God. We thank God for, for dying on the cross for us. We thank God for, uh, for just going through what he went through. We can never imagine or begin to feel the pain of what God, what Christ went through for us or the anguish that God went through to see his son on the cross hanging like that. So we ought to be thanking God every moment of every hour. We ought to be thanking him for the resurrected Christ because, again, they whipped him, they hung him, he hung, he bled, he died. But early, somebody say early, early, early. Early Sunday morning, he got up. Christ got up with all power in his hand. Not my power, not your power. He got up with all power and dominion in his hand. So for that, we thank you, Lord. For that, we thank you for the resurrected Christ. For that, we thank you for the love of a real mother. Amen. The doors of the church are open. We're resting from our seats. With everyone today, this day, which is a special day, unlike no other, because we are honoring our mothers today, there are some of us that know what the love of a real mother is. Then there are some that didn't know until they got older. But all in all, we thank God for the life of real mothers. So would there be one today that will give their life to Christ? Give their life to Christ. It does not matter where you've been, what you've done. God wants you. He wants you like that. He wants you broken. He wants you. He wants you so that he can restore you. Hey, God. He wants to fill you up. Let him do that. Glory to God. Would there be another? Oh, God, we thank you this morning. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Sing a verse of that. Thank you, Lord. Oh, yes. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Oh, yes. that you tuned in with us today we pray that the word that you received on today was something that you'll be able to use this week listen i know that god is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all we can ask or think all you have to do is abide in him all you have to do is believe in him I'm so glad you tuned in with us, and we hope and pray that you'll tune in with us on Tuesday nights for Bible study on Zoom, or next Sunday we'll be right back here. God bless you all, and have a blessed week.